So in the UK, we lose somebody to immersion in cold water about every 30 hours, uh, a child a week. And although it used to be thought that those deaths were primarily due to hypothermia, we now know that around about 60% of them are due to these short-term responses to immersion. And there is no doubt that the most dangerous response of all of those associated with going in cold water is the loss of control of breathing on the initial seconds of immersion, part of the cold shock response. So what can you do as a boater to reduce the hazard associated with cold shock? Well, number one is don't fall in. Make sure you're clipped on um, whenever you can be. If you're going to have a chance of going into the water, wear specialist protective equipment and clothing. Um, chief amongst which is going to be a outer clothing that slows the rate of entry of water towards the skin. Make sure you're wearing a life jacket. When you go in the water, stay still. Float until you get your breathing back under control before you try and do anything. As you go into the water, your skin temperature falls rapidly and that evokes a response which causes a big gasp. Now that gasp response is between two and three litres, a big breath in. Uh, it's worth putting that in context and knowing that actually the lethal dose of salt water into the lung for drowning is about one and a half litres. So with that first breath, that first gasp, you may have passed the lethal dose for drowning. Then that gasp is followed by uncontrollable hyperventilation. Now, you don't have to be under the water for that to be a problem. Clearly, if you're at the surface of the water, but with waves breaking over the face, then it just happens that if it, coincidentally a wave goes over the face and the airway as you're hyperventilating and breathing in, then again, you can easily cross the lethal dose of drowning. So it's really important that you protect the airway in that first few seconds. On the other side of the uh, coin are the, all the cardiac responses, and there's a significant stress put on the heart during the first seconds of immersion, and there's a significant increase in blood pressure. And we think that quite a significant number of people have a problem because of a cardiac response in that first seconds of immersion, resulting in arrhythmias, dysrhythmias, and heart attacks. Make sure that you rest and relax and float until you get your breathing back under control. Thrashing about and trying to swim um, at a time when you have no control of your breathing is potentially very dangerous. Make sure you're as fit as possible, because we know that fitter people have a smaller initial response to, um, to immersion, a smaller cold shock response. You can habituate to cold. As few as five or six, two or three minute immersions in cold water can halve the cold shock response. So there are lots of things that you can do. First and foremost, don't go in.